Hello, my name's Tom Sherrington and I'm the co-author of Teaching Walkthroughs and I'm delighted that Walkthroughs has found its way into the Chiltern Learning Trust teaching and learning framework. In the video series that we've been making, the teachers have been very brave at putting themselves forward to showcase their development through using some of the individual techniques. So they've been taking a technique and modelling how to try to deploy that technique in a, in a class. The teachers are at different stages of development. Some people are very experienced using this particular technique and are showing how it's done very explicitly. And in other situations, you've got someone who's really working on the technique and they're on the journey. And you'll see that across the range of videos. So they're not setting themselves up to be exemplars of how the techniques should be done in some precise way. They're just showing their process as they're working through trying to work out how to use the techniques. So that's the spirit in which the video should be viewed. You're watching the teacher sort of being quite vulnerable and saying, well, this is me trying this out. And then there'll be a coaching conversation with me afterwards where we discuss the, the challenges that they experienced and where things have gone well. So I hope you enjoy the videos. Uh, and thanks to all the teachers who took part. It's, a, it's a quite a brave thing to do, as you'll see. But I think they did a magnificent job and the whole process has been incredibly rewarding. So the walkthroughs then, you'll see in the coaching conversations form the spine of all our conversations. We open the book at the walkthrough that the teacher's working on and look at each of the different steps to see how well each one of them has gone. And that's an important thing that we're trying to model that the steps provide a springboard for the conversation rather than an absolute sort of set of rules you have to follow religiously. And again, the teachers did a great job of modeling that in the discussions that we had. So enjoy the videos and I hope you find them useful in your own professional development. So here I've got my example. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna partition the wholes and the fractions. So the first step I would take is I would bring my two and my three over there. And two add three is obviously five, we know that, nice and simple, okay? Then I would bring my fractions over here. So I've got a third, add two over five. This is the part that's a little bit more challenging and will require you to really think about the next steps that you're going to take. This is like what I would call messy thinking. So what I would do is I would look at this and I would look at my fractions and I would say, right, I know that they need to have the same denominator to add them. Do we all know that? Yeah. Fabulous. So I would look at my smaller denominator. In this case, it's the three. And I'd say, can I do anything to that three to get to five by multiplying it by a whole number? No, I can't. So then I would look, is there another low comma multiple? No. So I would cross multiply. What I mean by that is I'm going to times this fraction by 5, the denominator over here, and then I'm going to times this fraction by the 3, which is the denominator over there. Okay, we've done this before. Are we all happy with that stage? Okay, so I would do whatever I do to the denominator, I must do to the... Fantastic. 5 times 1 is 5 over 3 times 5 is 15 add, and then I'm timesing this fraction by 3, 2 times 3 is 6 over 15. Now they have the same denominator, I can add the numerator. So here, 5 add 6 we know is 11 over 15. And then to get my final answer, I will pull together my whole number and my fraction, so my final answer will be 5 and 11 over 15. Okay, are we all happy with that? Yeah. Okay, so when I've done that, I will review that by looking at my success criteria. Okay, so remember we've digested the information, made sure we understood the question. We partitioned the mixed numbers and we added together the wholes. Okay, we converted the fractions to ensure they had the same denominator um, and then we pull it back together. Something to really look out for is that these are proper fractions. Okay, this is a proper fraction. If it was an improper fraction, obviously the numerator would be 
bigger than the fantastic okay and then I would combine them back together to get my answer it's really important as well that you check it looks reasonable okay are we happy with those steps for success Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you for correcting yourself. What did you times this fraction by? I multiplied that one by four. Okay, multiplied that by four because it's this denominator here, so it's four, okay? Perfect. And then what did we times this one by? Three. Times it by three. Everyone happy with that step? Yeah. Okay. Now, what do I need to do to um, finish that line? You can add them together, which is 13, 12. Okay. Again, linking back to my example here, what is different? What is different? Yes. The numerator is bigger than the denominator. Okay, therefore it is a... Improper fraction. Improper fraction. Thank you so much. Can I leave that as an improper fraction? No. No, I can't. And I would say that this is an illegal maths move. Who knows what I must do? Do you know what I must do? Okay, so I know you're all going to do a superb job because you have just answered that question so well. So now you can move on to the independent challenges. So obviously we've got challenge one, two, three, four or five. And I would like you to choose to start from challenge one, two or three and then you can move yourselves on. Off you go. Hi Kay, it was really good to see you teaching the other day, really enjoyed it. Thank you for letting me come and watch your lesson. No problem. And uh, you're looking at the live modelling, which is a really important technique, especially when you're doing maths. And it was great to see you going through the walkthrough. And so we're going to look through the steps of the walkthrough, just a kind of way of evaluating things. But uh, I, I thought it was a really, really good um, example of it. So you're looking at mixed numbers, different denominators and, and adding them. So the students have got to find lowest common denominator that type of thing mm -hmm. so that's great she had a nicely chosen example on the board and you know you went you you, you you did all the talking and you went straight into the talking and you actually got, got quite a nice way of talking through your thoughts which is I, i've worked with teachers where they find that just hard you know they want to do it and then talk but you're sort of able to to, to say what you're doing at the time and that's quite nice so i think and that's something you've obviously crafted which is good to see thank you and then this is what I loved. You said, OK, let's, this is what I call the messy thinking. And to me, just to, to use that phrase, it's kind of allowing the students to think, OK, this bit's supposed to be a bit, this is a bit where we have to really think hard. And, and I like that, so that you use that term. Um, and, and something really explicit, like, I know I need to, and I, I know I need them to have a common denominator, but what is the common denominator? So use that, that sort of stating the problem that you're thinking about and then finding the answer, that was, that was great. And then, of course, getting to the fifteenth, so it was thirds and fifths, all of that. So that was all nicely done. And then he talked about the the criteria and whether whether you'd kind of met them. So that the idea of having some success, have I achieved it? I, I suppose it, part of me thinks that in maths, one of the things to do there is to sort of say, does it feel like about the right kind of answer? Because I feel like in maths, you're trying to sense of scale and for other types of problems sometimes you'd be saying does it seem about right you know that's about how mm -hmm. big that is that's about how big that is so in maths you've kind of have this idea of what kind of answer might i be getting and is it sort of in the right zone but generally the whole thing of having checking was nice and then we went to those examples and this is a brilliant idea to have different questions and i, I thought that was a really clever way of getting them to talk about it not do the maths, but are they what's the same and what's different? And that's a, I mean, I'll ask you a bit about, about the rationale for that, but that was all really good. And then, of course, you reach the point of, right, now get on with someone on your own. So you, you, you just set them up really well, like from the modelling through to this, to the practice, and, and that was just a nice sequence. So all those things are, are, are strong about it. So let, let, if we we're going to talk about doing it even more effectively, where would you be thinking, OK, if we probe a bit, what... What would you be thinking? That bit was a bit awkward, or I wish I'd done this, or some of the students still found this hard. Um, so the bit that I um, would probe and I'd break down and like depending on the lesson. So um, I like to kind of get 
a feel of what the children understand in that guided practice. Um, and then I could pull a group off for some more guided um, examples. So if they weren't understanding, like a boy put his hand up and asked me a question um, about, um, oh, would he cross multiply or could he find a lower common multiple? I think actually if they're not really, really solid with that understanding, just pulling them back for another guided example to discuss it and get them to use the language. So um, kind of almost if going forward and then going back through the steps to build upon mm. their understanding. Okay, and, and it was interesting because I, I don't know what your expectations were, but they seem to be able to do it more, perhaps better than you might have hoped they would, because you sort of did this quite good decision making where you just sort of a student gave this really blinding answer about mm -hmm. how the, the on one of the examples you don't need to find the, the you don't cross multiply, you just find the lowest common multiple because it was halves and eighths or something. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. So he didn't need more. He, that student was at least able to go, right, okay, I can crack yeah, on Yeah, he was now. ready, wasn't he? And then when he went into the independent work, he chose straight away to go straight on to challenge three because I gave them that option. Challenge one, two or three, start there and then you can build yourself up to challenge five. He straight away went to challenge three and then he only um, started finding that deeper level of thinking on challenge four with the missing numbers because um, that was much more challenging. Um, so he then had to go back to the model to be able to take that step to find the missing numbers. Yeah, that's really interesting. But you left the models up. And this is, like, again, which, I mean, you've got the whiteboard, you've got the board at the side. And to me, that was really strong practice, so that you're leaving the models to be seen whilst they're doing the practice. And mm -hmm. that is, not everybody does that. Sometimes people, like, wipe those off and thinking, where have the models gone? And, and you, they no longer, no longer can see them. So that, that was all really good. I think something to take that forward to the next step as well would be making sure it's up on a working wall so that they can see that flow throughout, especially if you've already covered addition of fractions, adding that onto a working wall for the flow would be would have been my next thing yeah. to think about. And bigger. I mean, one of the things that you, you I mean, it's difficult, you know, when you're, when you're in the back of the class, like the, the sex, sex, success criteria slide and the scale, it, it's just, a, I just go a bit bigger, even in the writing on the board. Because from the back of the class, you're sort mm -hmm. of peering in to see. But that's, that's a, a, a tiny issue, really. The main thing, I, if, if from my point of view, that I was going to sort of see how you felt about this was that during the modelling is to check you for understanding kind of as you go. And a couple of times, uh, there's a kind of a little thing which you, you occasionally kind of use, which is to say something like, is everybody happy with that step? Um, and do we agree with that? And when you're saying that sort of very generally, mm -hmm. you think, well, who, how do I get an answer for that? If everyone says, is everybody happy? If they say yes or no, you don't really know. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you said that, but then you thought, oh, hang on a minute. No, I better ask somebody. Because in itself saying, is everybody happy with that? And they will go, hmm. Mm -hmm. It's sort of, you know what I mean? So just yeah. watch out for that type of, we, we all yeah. do it. It's like a classic kind of teacher thing to, to ask yeah. that, that sort of almost rhetorical question. Maybe yeah. about some form of assessment thumbs or like out of five could develop it a bit, do you think? Maybe or, or I would just use more cold calling. So during the during the live modelling, it, it sort of say, stop for a minute and just say, okay, everybody, let's have a think. I've just done that. Why have I made the lowest, com how did I work out 15 as the lowest common multiple or, or the denominator? Have a think, why is it 15? And then... James, so why do you think I've chosen 15? And it could have been at that point any of them. So you cold would you, call. Would you do that in that original first stage or would you leave that until the guided practice to get the children involved? So there's obviously different kind of opinions on that. Good question. I, I, I would do the example just like you did mm -hmm. and then step back from it mm -hmm. and then check for understanding okay, yeah. of the one they can see that's correct. So they know it's yeah. 15. They're not having to work out 15. They know it's correct. Mm -hmm. And you would say, so why is it that? Okay, and why is it this? And why didn't I choose 30 or why didn't I choose? So they can, so yeah. you're checking for understanding yeah. on, a, on something that's already yeah. done um, without the kind of, is everyone get that? Because you're just sampling a couple. Mm -hmm. So if they all feel it could be them, they're sort of hanging on your words. But yeah, it's, that's, that's why the live modeling that you did was so good because they can see it nicely unfolding correctly. And that's the correctness which they're learning from. Oh, okay, that's how you do it. Okay, it's only that. And they're seeing it's doable. Mm -hmm. And that's what you modelled so nicely. It felt, although you said messy thinking, yeah, you made that seem sort of, oh, it's messy, but look, we can achieve it. Yeah. So that you made it seem sort of well, doable, which is nice. You know, and that, that's how math should feel like. It's not like super hard. It's just a couple of things. And you, 
I think one of the best things in that sequence was the fact that you responded to the fact that the students were were up for it. You know, so you 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 went, okay, we're up, we can do this. You even said that to them. I think you can do this now. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was a good a good decision. So that, so to to be to focus in on the on the the uh, kind of the action step to go ahead. What do you think? What from that? What do you think? Okay, this is the thing I'm going to take away and kind of. Yeah, I, I definitely think the um, like once I've done the model and showed them my thought processing, probing to understand their thought process would be really good to st stand back from that model, look at specific elements, especially the more challenging, messy thinking elements um, and, and kind of cold core questions. That would be a really good, good next step. Yeah, I, I, I think so. And then, and then, uh, then they're even even the, l the least confident students are even more clear, yeah. uh, and, th and then they, the same exact thing would flow. But I think it's a great idea. So that's the step then to do that more checking for understanding, mm -hmm. at, just at that exact point, uh, just after you've modelled the thinking, while you're in this stage three of it, review the success of your quality of your yeah. work. But it's that checking for understanding. Yeah, definitely. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, look. I mean, if I if I say you're gonna, you know, you'll you'll be doing this stuff for a while, but if I because it doesn't even matter what the subject is, you'll be teaching them more maths. If I drop in, say, our next time, I think it's about three weeks from now. Yeah. So if I say this this first period after lunch on that Thursday, yeah. if I drop in there, yeah. and then we'll, we'll follow up the next conversation after that. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much. That was Thank great. Thank you. That was really good.